This video is brought to you by Arlik, makers of the Vega G 2.1 streaming deck. Click to arlik.com for more information. If someone offered me a $3,000 hi-fi system, so a loudspeaker system, or a $3,000 head-fi system, so headphones, and I could only choose one forever, I would choose the headphones. Now why is that? Well because $3,000 in the headphone world is really getting close to the summit of what's possible. But in the loudspeaker world, $3,000, you're just getting started. So basically, headphones give us better value for money, especially at the higher end, than do loudspeakers. Now on my table here today, I have a, quite a vulgar display of high-end headphones. I made videos about this one before. This is the final D8000 Pro. I've made a video about this one before. This is the Meze. Empyrean. This has appeared in a lot of videos. And then today we're going to look at two different headphones. The Rossen Audio Rad Zero, that's these. And then also a pair of Ether 2 from Dan Clark Audio. Now, as a professional tool, when I'm reviewing source gear or DACs or things like that, I need a pair of headphones because I realize that my loudspeaker listening is compromised by the room. So a pair of headphones like these Ether 2 remove the room. And for me, headphones are almost always full range. I can hear very deep into the music. So I use these in combination with my loudspeaker listening to test gear really further up the food chain. And I think that's an invaluable, yeah, it's a tool that I use. But also, just for pleasure, I find that headphones give me a more immersive listening experience. It's not as physical, I mean, you don't feel it on your body, but it allows me to kind of sink deeper into the music, allows me to listen further into the mix. Let's put this into context a little bit. A pair of these Ether 2 sell for around 2300 US dollars. That's as much as I spent on the GIK Acoustics wall panels and bass traps behind me. Just let that sink in for a moment. Just let that sink in for a moment. So these Rad Zeros from Ross and Audio are 2600 US dollars or thereabouts. I've been listening to these for the last five or six months alongside the Ether 2. I probably made a little bit more noise about these headphones on my channels in recent weeks because on Friday, last Friday, I recorded a podcast with Alessandro Cortini and John Tejada about this very headphone because they both have a pair. So by the time you're watching this video, that podcast will already be out there. But today I wanted to talk about the RADs, talk about the Ether 2, um, together because then we can play a sort of a game of compare and contrast. So if I say these have, I don't know, a, a tall, wide and deep sound stage, which is the most horrible cliche, but if I say that, you know the context in which I'm making that statement because I'm comparing these to these. Now, makers of the Ether 2, Dan Clark Audio, used to be called Mr. Speakers, but no more. But this is the hard shell protective case that 
comes with the Ether 2. And then with the Rad Zeros from Rossen Audio, we get a Pelican type travel case, which is extremely robust. So both of these headphones are planar magnetic designs. These ear cups are made from a sort of a combination of resin, um, a kind of a liquid wood, something you might see on a knife handle, something like that. They're molded, they only take initially, I think about six minutes to cure. So they're made with a combination of colors. But these are handmade in the USA and every pair, because of this, this coloring here, every pair looks different. Now, the Ether 2's appearance is more uniform. Generally, most pairs look the same. These are also made in the USA and the ear cups are carbon fiber, so very light. So because of the, the large differences in their design, these headphones do not weigh the same. This one is much heavier than this one. So let's get the scales out. So we'll do the Rad Zeros first. 620 grams. Then here come the Ether 2. 311 grams. 312 grams. <laughs> So because the Rad Zero put over 600 grams on the scales, the weight has to be distributed properly so that we don't get pressure points on the top of the head. So what Alex Rossen has done, Alex Rossen X orders the X Shinola, what he's done is he's introduced a fairly robust side clamping force. Now it does relax over time. I've been using these, as I say, for many months, so it's not as kind of fierce as it was when I first took them out of the box. But I'm not a fan of heavy headphones, generally speaking. But when I first put these on, because they clamp so nicely, so tightly on the head, I never felt that I was getting too much of a pinch here. Sometimes I do, you know, maybe after a few hours, but it's not a major issue. It's not the major issue that I thought it would be. However, no such thoughts with the Ether 2. These have a suspension headband here, something called Nitinol or Nitinol. It's a you know, very strong but flexible headband. The ear cups are super light. We're looking at 300 grams all up. So th this is a far more comfortable headphone than the Rad Zero by a long way. Now, one extra thing to mention about the Ether 2 is the, the cable, the stock cable that comes with it. It's a little bit microphonic. It's more microphonic than the cable that comes with the Rad Zero. That means when you knock the cable, you can hear it in the headphone cup. But if you're sitting around on a couch, or for me, where I listen a lot on my desk, you know, microphony, microphony, <laughs> microphony is not really much of an issue. Now, when it comes to matching amplifiers and DACs to these two different headphone models, I mean, with the Rad Zero, I found them very easy to drive. I mean, I could actually listen to this with a phone or with a, well, just about with an AudioQuest Dragonfly. Um, it doesn't sound as full and as rich as I'd like and as I hear from the RME ADI2 DAC FS, where I can also apply EQ. I did try some EQ with these that John Tejada gave me, which I quite liked. Um, I haven't really made my mind up on that yet, but for the sake of this review, I kept it flat, obviously, because we want to make sure that we're comparing factory stock with factory stock. And to that end, with the Ether 2, we have the option to EQ the headphones slightly, to voice them slightly differently with different ear pads and I've got two sets of these and I have to say I'm, I'm sorry but I've never tried them not at all because again I want to compare headphones in their factory stock position but know that passive EQ is available. Now in my lounge room behind me, I was mainly listening with the DCS Bartok with occasional diversions to the Mola Mola Tambaki. 
but on my desk I've got the RME. Later on I added the Rupert Neve headphone amplifier, which ultimately proved more essential to the Ether 2 than it did the RAD Zero. So you need to kind of factor in proper, proper, like I guess a dedicated headphone amplifier for the Ether 2, probably more than you do with the RAD Zero. The RAD Zero I can run quite happily out of the RME, whereas I really felt that the Ether 2 benefited from the sort of extra smoothness and a greater sense of sort of a, a more voluptuous bottom end that the Rupert Neve brought to the table. Now in comparing their sound, I'm not a big fan of slicing the frequency spectrum three ways, but I think it's worth commenting on the treble on these because it's not super, super airy. Everything is just nicely there, it's just right, but it's not as sort of breezy, and I use this word very carefully here, bright. Not bright as in the etch way, but just breezy and daylight bright, if you like, as these Ether 2. So these give us a greater sense in some respects, or maybe they over it, I don't know, um, of the sort of ambience of a recording. It's more obvious with these. But yeah, I guess it's hard to know whether it's being overplayed or not because we don't know what the original recording was like. And anybody that tells you that they do either had to have been there, but in a certain seat, and yeah, generally, yeah, they're probably talking a little bit of nonsense. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know why I said that, but whatever. So what I'm saying here is that the Ether 2 tend to favor finesse, a lightness of touch in the top end. And if I want to oversimplify here, this headphone really shines with acoustic music or music where the recording space is very important to the overall presentation. Now we get similar levels of detail retrieval with the RAD Zero, but this is a much punchier headphone in the low end. There's more weight, there's more heft. I guess in crude terms, you'd say this is more bassy, but it's not as simple as that because they both dig out the low end detail, but this just adds more push and more shove to that low end detail than do these. So that means, and again, I'm oversimplifying, that these headphones are absolutely superb with electronic music or hip hop or R&B, modern R&B that is, anything with the kind of the sort of the, the low end swing or punch, these are just knockout. With that sort of heavier low end, the Rad Zero have more of a, a sort of dark chocolatey sound. And that chocolatey does exist because I looked it up in the stereophile audio glossary the other day, just to be sure. So don't think that this is just some John metaphor that I've just pulled out of my ass, because it's not. Now with a heavier low end and also a slightly richer mid bass, the mid range and vocals don't tend to overtly pop as much as they do with the Ether 2. So because the bass doesn't have the weight and the shove and the push and all those other words um, of, the, of the Rad Zero, this could be interpreted as more of a mid-range centric headphone. Now, obviously I'm not suggesting for a moment there's some kind of peak in the mid-range. I'm just saying that without that heavier low end, the mid-range stands out more, vocals stand out more with this headphone. But if you ask me which one offered a more obvious sense of tone and timbre and music's color, I'd say Rad Zero. I do want to say something about head staging in that the Ether 2 probably has the widest head stage of any headphone that I have here. It's certainly wider than the Rad Zero. So if you're a fan of that sort of broad sort of cinematic image right here, Ether 2 is your guy. Now when I cover headphones and earphones, what I like to do very often is liken those headphones and earphones to loudspeaker models. Now with the Rad Zero, I was reminded of the ATC SCM series, whereas 
with a slightly less overt emphasis on low end push, shove, pop, punch, the Ether 2 tend to remind me more of a Magnapan, like a 3.6 or a 3, is there a 3.7? I think there is, but like a big Magnapan. That's these, in my book anyway. So from the qualities that I've described so far, I would expect viewers to sort of try and work out which one leans towards their priorities. But if you ask me which one I prefer on out and out sound quality, I would say the Rad Zero. Not by a long way, but this one does more for me in terms of just pure sound quality, considering nothing else, this is the one I would pick. But it's not as simple as that, is it? Because if you were to ask me, a bit like the question at the start of this video, which of these two would I choose as my forever headphone? I could only pick one and it has to be forever. I'm gonna go with the Ether 2, even though it doesn't sound quite as good. And that's because of its lightness and its comfort factor. I can listen to these for longer. Very often, I don't even feel like I'm <laughs> wearing headphones. The only headphone that I think is more comfortable than these is the Sennheiser HD 800 S. That's high praise. So for me, what I'm saying is it's not just about sound quality when choosing a headphone. Comfort is really, really high up my list. So in my loudspeaker listening world, if I were to liken it to cars, at best I'm driving a Tesla. But generally it's like a, a Ford or a BMW or a Mercedes, like my, you know, Carefellas 50 Bucarts. Um, you know, occasionally I go higher, but generally the room caps really what I can do with loudspeakers in the space behind me. But that glass ceiling doesn't apply when it comes to headphones. And also the financial glass ceiling is much, much lower, I guess, with headphones. I mean, these are some of the best headphones in the world and they cost less than three grand. So this is where I kind of, in the headphone space is where I do my uber high-end listening, especially with ancillary gear like the Bartok and the Mola Mola. So what I'm saying here is, is that my loudspeakers are nowhere near, anywhere close to being what one might describe as some of the best in the world. But my headphone systems are. And this really allows me to suspend reality. I mean, this is what music listening is all about, isn't it? It's about taking me somewhere else, or in many cases, listen to older albums, taking me some when else. Germans have a word for some when. Irgendwann? Yeah. So obviously that word doesn't exist in English, but I like the idea of music transporting me to a different time and place. I mean, this is why we do it, isn't it? I mean, for me it is. So if you wanna know what music I listen to during, well, I guess the months I've been listening to these two, you'll have to look at the B-roll because I'm gonna be featuring many examples of the music I listen to in the B-roll and it'll appear, you'll see it throughout the video. So what I'm talking about here is suspending reality. I'm talking about using music to disconnect from real life which is very important at the moment because real life is a bit of a challenge for pretty much all of us. And with headphones like these, that disconnection from reality really doesn't get any better. minus five degrees Celsius out here right now. But anyway, if you like this video, please smash the like button. If you like my attitude towards high-end headphones, in that really, I think if you're gonna spend mega money on headphones or speakers, you go much further, much more quickly with headphones than you do with speakers. So if you dig that, please subscribe to this channel. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching.